should I? <laughs> Did you prepare for tonight? <laughs> Did you say that tonight I'm seeing Penny Arcade for maybe the first time? What can I do to be more open? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the first one in my family born in America. My family migrated from southern Italy, from Lucania, from the Appalachia of Italy. They didn't come here because they were looking for jobs. They didn't come here for a better life. They came here because they were starving. They came here for food. You know that expression, life sucks and then you die? They invented it. <laughs> Between the age of one and six, no one ever spoke to me except to give me a direct order. <laughs> Sit down, get up, wash this, come inside. Go out. Clean this. I know that for Americans, especially middle class Americans, that sounds really bleak. <laughs> because no one ever asked me what I thought about anything. No one ever asked me how I felt about anything. But it left a lot of room for my imagination. People of Southern Lucania are peasants. They're pagans. They just use Christianity to hang their pagan beliefs on. <laughs> they migrated from Lucania to New Britain, Connecticut. A factory town. And even in the bright 1950s, I grew up in the shadow of remote poverty in the presence of death. residing in earthly things. And I rebelled from that culture, a culture that has no understanding of rebellion because it has no sense of individuality, of free will, or even the individual soul. And so I, too, became evil in that family because I would not accept my role, because I would not accept my place as a girl, as a servant, as a slave, as someone who could not speak and must not speak. Later, I would become incomprehensible to the world. First, because I was an immigrant. Second, because I was a peasant. Third, because I was poor. Fourth, because I was a girl. Fifth, because I was queer. Sixth, because I would not keep my mouth shut. Seventh, because I would not fit in. And then eventually, because I would not fit in. funny to be me. I think about it all the time. <laughs> I came to New York by accident. I didn't know that one could become an artist. And it was all accidental. As I said to a girl who was in my house, a very, very nice girl, where I was sitting around the table, me, 63-year-old bisexual, 
with my friend Joni, 58-year-old bisexual, with my friend Jasmine, 55, lesbian, visiting with a very nice girl who was, we thought, a lesbian. And she was dressed really kind of butch, you know, in a kind of madman way. <laughs> and she had on like this kind of burgundy shirt with kind of burgundy pants, but she was wearing lipstick and her hair, although very short here, was like really curly here. And Jasmine, who's from Australia, and doesn't really talk to people that much, except dead people, <laughs> leaned over and said to this young woman who was 27 years old, Wow, you're a butch dyke. <laughs> and the girl said, Well, I don't really identify as a lesbian. I'm gender fluid. And Jasmine said, but you look like a butch dyke to me. <laughs> and I said, yeah, you look like a butch dyke to me too. <laughs> and the girl said, no, you see, I dress this way in order to practice my queerness on a daily basis. And I said, shit. It's too bad you weren't 27 in 1977 because then you could just dress that way because you fucking felt like it! <laughs> Old gender fluid, talk to a 65 year old dyke who used to be bisexual, who used to be heterosexual, and listen to her explain to this woman who's been in the downtown art scene right. since 1960 fucking five the proper way to talk to a trans person which pronouns to use. <laughs> Not wanting to be hated one more time. <laughs> I chose not to say anything because you know why? It gets really tiresome being hated. Actually, and I hate so many people already that I really can't hate anybody new until 2022. <laughs> Pouch right. with six other people who took the same class. 
Language is only hate language when it's said in hate. Uh, 